Hello everyone, let us uh, start our uh, next session. So, we have already identified the needs, we have described the needs of purchasing and sourcing. So, today we will actually uh, go through something called organizational design. So, we all know what is organization design uh, in general in an organization, but uh, when it comes to a function, you know, it has to have specific uh, design for their governance, right, to assign roles and responsibilities of different uh, designations. Okay. So, when it comes to purchasing and supply management, right, how this governance structure uh, is uh, formed that depends on what is the nature of an organization. Just spend one minute and thinking about, you know, uh, when we talk about public purchasing or private purchasing, right? When government organizations have to purchase, right? Whether their decisions are same as, you know, private organizations' decisions, okay? They are not same, right? So, um, that is what, just think about what are the, uh, issues or challenges you can see or you know uh, how you know public procurement is different from private procurement means purchasing and procurement decisions in private sector is very different from public sectors. So, it is not only from the uh, purchasing and sourcing point of view even you know as a citizen of any country, it is very important to know like you know how our public procurement is carried out, right. So, around 20 to 30 percent of uh, GDP spend is, uh, is actually contributed by public procurement, okay. So, this is very essential, right. So, can you give an idea why you think you know public procurement? should be given attention and how this is different from private procurement. Public procurement controls the prices. So, anyone wants to elaborate on what does this mean controlling the prices? What do we mean by controlling the prices? Yes, correct. So, in agriculture commodities, right, mostly uh, uh, commodities like wheat, rice, you know, there government buys the product, right, and they set minimum sales, uh, minim, um, this is called MSP, right, minimum sale price, okay. It holds different for different commodities, okay. This is one example of public procurement is not it, right. But at large if we would see that, what is the difference between public procurement and private procurement, okay, right. So, uh, from the strategic point of view, like you know strategic goal point of view, right, what is the main objective of public procurement and private procurement? So, the answer lies in you know very good hint given by our friend that you know the uh, setting MSP for the farmers. So, if we have to see at a broad level, right, a strategic perspective or maybe the main goal of public procurement is welfare of society, right, very good. So, how would they ensure that it is for the wider society? Society definitely covers customers like you and me. What else? We are talking of purchasing. So, what public procurement has to do with the suppliers? What is the strategic objective towards suppliers? So, 
social welfare is one thing ok. So, how social welfare can be achieved? So, for customers it is good, fair prices right, food security or other security, other utilities like you know energy, water, electricity right fine. From customers point of view it is very well taken, but how from the purchasing point of view? Ensuring minimum price is fine, but how this will be a welfare towards purchasing and suppliers? Is minimum supply, minimum price uh, uh, accepted by all suppliers? Very good. This is one aspect where we see the relevance with social welfare from the purchasing side that for some of the items or you know when government would realize that you know. Uh, we need to encourage uh, uh, maybe MSMEs right or SMEs right to bring them in the uh, in the mainstream of business. So, they set some small percentage or quota to be purchased from MSME sectors ok. So, this aspects like you know are more specific to the public procurement. This is another aspect of like you know taking care of uh, suppliers right in the public set setting. What else? Yes, so can we come out of MSP? MSP point is very well taken ok. Can we see at large right at large you know the supplier set setting. Yes, yes. So, make in India is one right promoting make in India means promoting you know the small scale suppliers ok. So, this is about you know the goal, but now how the activities would be performed ok. So, the most important thing when you know purchasing activity happens right, it is the fair chance to all the suppliers to participate in the purchasing process ok. So, you might have seen like you know in newspapers various standards comes right. So, request for proposal comes right, it comes in the newspaper. This is mostly done from the public sector right. Why do you think you know they would advertise it in or uh, publicize it in you know newspapers or all public announcement channels to give the fair chance to all the suppliers right. But with whether this thing is the goal of private purchasing right no right. Now, you understand that you know one point you have given a social welfare right, another you have given uh, we have seen that the fair participation of all potential suppliers give opportunity to all suppliers vendors to bid for the projects or the proposals ok. This is very important. So, uh, however, for private for private organizations right, it is the the value which is seen and you know just for the competitiveness uh, that is the main goal for the private organizations when they go for you know the uh, supply process or when they look for vendors, when they look for bidding right. So, for them it is not necessary you know to announce it publicly right. So, those kind of differences right. So, that is what supply management depends on the nature of organization, how this nature of organization affects you know the governance structure of any public public procurement section or function ok. So, whether it is public or private right. One more question, as customers or as citizens of country why we should be bothered about how public procurement takes place. Should I ask the question should we be bothered? We have to be yes exactly. So, we as citizens we are paying the tax. So, as I have told you 20 to 30 percent of GDP goes in the uh, public spend right in the procurement processes. So, it is like you know it is nothing but it is the public money you know which is invested. So, this is a 10 percent of national income right. So, 
So that's why you know in general this is in interest of public how government spends that money right many a times we say that you know why public procurement takes a lot of time why this is this much lead time you know why it takes you know to get the response in the tenders why there are many when he there are so many meetings happen right it it all happens to ensure the transparency and the fairness okay so that every individual at the supplier side get good amount of time and opportunity to bid for the project and proposal right so uh, this is if you want to see that recently uh, government has indian government has taken this initiative have you ever gone through this website gem what is gem this is government e marketplace right so uh, for the past 3 4 years every government department every public department including iit madras including all government educational institutions right there is it is a mandate to buy all the uh, procurement related goods like you know which are used in this uh, government departments it has to be bought through egem right this is the mandate and this is a good opportunity you know just like an ordinary e market place you know many vendors would get this opportunity to uh, position their products here right it's not only uh, buying it is uh, this platform also gives the uh, opportunity to go for reverse auctions and reverse bidding okay so it is it is definitely a very good platform for the purchasers and the suppliers smes to participate at the same time for the welfare of uh, the citizen right this government buying is again like you know one has to do it like you know uh, in in a mode where we can achieve savings right cost cutting right from the uh, department customers point of view when we go for bidding and reverse auctions we can actually go for the lowest bid and we can save the money right you see that's a very interesting platform at one end all suppliers are given an opportunity to bid at the same time from the customer end you know we would buy generally they say l1 the lowest bid right is always awarded the contract okay so these are the very interesting platform you see that now see the goals as we move uh the nature of organization if it is public sector the public procurement the goals objectives the process the governance structure would be very different than the private sector okay uh when it comes to other other aspect goods and services that we have already discussed right we have seen uh, how services because of intangibility perishability right and heterogeneity this would uh, put different impetus on you know the purchasing procurement than the goods the other aspect is whether an organization hold single site or multiple sites right just imagine you know the kfc mcdonalds okay if they have to procure their food items for all the stores in a state in a country so what kind of decisions they would be having right as compared to an organization which is having single site single site is easy to manage however as you uh, expand you know so is the complexity right you have to take care of warehouses where to store the material how many vendors whether the same vendor would supply to whole country or whole region region means maybe asia pacific or you know there are same global supplier right think about ikea have you ever visited ikea so one must see that you know how ikea could able to provide variety right and uh, the key is procurement i would definitely recommend go through their model right so how they go for supplier management okay and uh, as we have said that small and small and medium or large organization that also impact you know the purchasing decisions so given this background uh we will not go 
uh, very deep in you know the governance structure of uh, uh, supply management or purchasing but we would certainly touch upon the main aspects right where which is authority and responsibility right we know that any of our or any organization design all other aspects of coordination control division of labor that do matter but uh, we would go for uh, the main aspects of organizational structure of purchasing and supply management okay so uh, we all know organization design is a process of assessing and selecting the following aspects right so but to uh, to uh, apply this organization design in purchasing and procurement right what is important is we will see so this is just one example like you know how uh, the roles and responsibilities are distributed in the purchasing section right so in the last class we have seen that you know uh, um, mostly when we go see the organizations they they actually segregate the products in different classes we have already seen you know different types of needs right we saw retail we learnt uh, raw material we learnt semi uh, semi uh, assembled parts or components we learnt mros right we learnt the service category correct so these are the broad categories right broad needs right so within that also for example let's take fmcg retail whenever we go to a retail shop a very big retail giant fmcg right can you see what kind of you know categories they deal in right now mark my term categories okay so the broad group we have seen retail retail is resale okay where they don't process anything they don't uh, produce but you know they buy the product and they sell right by keeping margins right so those product now you know when we will see retail let's take one group first within retail you know there are so many categories means within this we have some similar kind of group products right which can be grouped so when you go to a retail you go to a section of uh, food items and within food there will be fresh food there would be processed food there would be frozen right there can be separate section of health or hygiene right so so most of the companies what they do they have different commodity managers right same concept if we would extend to other broad categories let's say manufacturing an auto giant how they manage they also have you know commodity managers like you know they have to have manage various metal buying like you know steel the copper and all okay so very similar to uh, each sector like fmcg so they they might be having you know uh, various managers dealing with each commodity right so commodity manager or sometimes called category manager okay so related things the similar things they form a category right so category managers and under that you know there can be buyers right so these are the different terms used by different companies okay but uh, let's see that you know there are uh, some category managers commodity managers they directly deal with buyers they take decisions on uh, from whom to buy when to buy so all supply related decisions are taken by you know this category manager right other than that you know we have administration process or let's say we can compile this thing okay so these are the four divisions we see while managing the purchasing function right the organization structure they have sourcing and commodity management right or it can be categories management so these uh, category managers or buyers they help in forming a sourcing strategy for their own category then we have materials management so mostly the logistics the warehousing the storage 
for many organization that also comes under the purview of purchasing and supply. So, that they have to ensure smooth and uninterrupted flow of materials. So, this is the another section in the purchasing. Then comes administration. So, we all now are aware of what is purchase order, right. So, purchase order, invoices, all those uh, uh, administrated, uh, administrative activities are done by administration. This is very interesting, okay. So, this is called supply research, okay. So, this is a very proactive step, you know, for purchasing function where, you know, the uh, they have to have each purchasing function have to have uh, personnel or like you know the employees who should be good at price and supply forecast continuously monitoring the exchanges right at the same time analysis of data right they should be so nowadays you know there is a good application of AI ML in uh, purchasing and supply management. We will talk about that in the coming sections. Uh, alternate materials research, you know, most of the companies have a dedicated subsection for vendor development, right, or vendor search. That team, the role of that team is only go for supply search, like supply market right, whether new market has been created means whether new suppliers have come, whether suppliers with new products have come, the team under this uh, supply research, supply search that has to just visit different places in search of various suppliers, alternate materials, advanced technologies, alternate technologies, alternate solutions, right. This is a dedicated team within the purchasing and supply function, right. Most of the auto giants have this subsection within the vendor development, right. So, this is uh, broadly uh, the activities or roles and responsibilities which purchasing function uh, uh, caters to, right. But very important thing, you know, which majorly impact the purchasing decision is the location of authority, right. This location of authority uh, actually has a huge scope on improving or impacting the efficiency and profitability of organization. That is why, so among all this organizational design aspect, we will be focusing on location of authority, okay.